After a point, players graduate from being a beginner, but they still have a long way they can improve. But the concepts for improving beyond might not be known, could be too confusing or just lacking a direction, so I'd like to give players further ways to improve beyond the obvious stuff. Looking for self-improvement yourself? You found the right place. But before you get into said improvement, set your expectations accordingly. Everyone can improve, and I mean everyone. What level of improvement are you looking to make? Being able to understand mechanics? Doing more damage beyond just knowing your rotation? Have a goal in mind. It's great to want to generally improve, but with such an undefined goal, you might struggle to reach it. That isn't to say that goal in itself is wrong. If you don't have any other specific goals, the tips in this video can still be of use to you. You'll develop specific skills in the process, but it's a lot like video games. Improve one aspect of your gameplay, and your overall level goes up. Which is also pretty meta when you think about it. Not that meta. Consider further that a lot of improving, if not most of it, is your ability to process information. Can you process what you need for your opener, rotation, mechanics? The information you struggle to process is the stuff you should focus on. What can you understand quickly, and what do you struggle to understand? This can be a way to identify what goal you should have if you're looking for one. You also want to remember that bad days happen. We all have them. Days where you just seem to not be able to do anything right. On days you're struggling, you need to focus on one aspect where you can. That's when having specific goals in mind will be a major benefit. You can identify what your weakest link is and focus on that specific thing. Your rotation is fine, you do good damage, etc. But you're bad at mechanics? Spend the day focusing on mechanics and maybe let your rotation suffer a little. Learning for tomorrow is going to be better in the long run. Even when not having a bad day, mistakes will still happen. We'll talk more about that later, but keep it in the back of your mind. Everyone makes mistakes, so don't assume the worst the moment you make one. Keeping mistakes down ends up being a specific skill you want to develop. Consistency. For all the difficulty the Ultimate Raid tier deals with, the number one skill tested is your level of consistency. Once you start getting 15 minutes into a fight, progging further is testing your ability to get back there often more than anything. If only one out of ten pulls is getting back to this spot, your group will suffer. But this skill isn't something that only helps in Ultimate, obviously. Being consistent in your play applies to all levels of content. You can't control what other players in a party do pull to pull, but you can ensure your performance is solid and the same every time. The way you dodge, your position in the arena, etc. This is especially helpful in a static environment. That is to say, a raid static, a static group of people you raid with. Assuming you're doing a mechanic correctly, doing the same movements over and over every time ensures your party knows how to react to you. Or if things go wrong, you can discuss what went wrong with the knowledge that you have done the exact same thing every pull. Now, these actions can be consistently wrong, too. But that is still a good thing. It reduces the number of variables when trying to figure out what is going right and wrong. Changing what you do from pull to pull at random just makes things more confusing. When you do need to change your actions, make that change consistent, too. And this time, it can be you doing it the right way. With only seven other players in your party, that means seven possible failure points per run. But that is still a much smaller chance than eight failure points. Keep yourself consistent, and you will be an asset to any team. To improve your consistency, you'll want to really understand what you are doing, which means going beyond just having a guide. When I make raid guides, I do try to emphasize why you were doing things in a specific way. At least mention all elements and how they fit together. This is because of how it helps a player perform a fight. When things go wrong, a mechanic is often still very much completable, but at a further cost. Maybe one more player is guaranteed to die. But this is an ideal scenario that can only be achieved if you know how the mechanic works. Or if you get lucky. For example, let's say a stack mechanic always targets the four DPS. A healer died, meaning one of the DPS lacks a partner. That DPS is going to die no matter what, but you can react to this accordingly. Reacting to others' mistakes is made so much easier when you actually understand what a fight is asking of you. Don't just leave it at, do this and the fight is win. Understand why things are done the way they are. 
The difficulty of this part differs from fight to fight, but gets easier as you develop this skill. That's true mechanical knowledge. As for your mistakes, though, you need to be able to deal with them. They are going to happen, it's a guarantee and an eventuality, but it's never the end of the world. First off, there's rotational mistakes. I'm going to immediately tangent into talking about openers and rotations because of how important this is for mistakes. My 1 to 90 series has giving openers, even if sometimes suboptimal, as a main feature. This is because having a starting point is really good. You want to have a rotation to follow that can give good damage. Even a job like Black Mage, that 90% of the time will completely break an opener due to how fights demand them to move. You'll then want to practice this opener on striking dummies. Now, I did say I'd be talking about stuff beyond this, but it needs to be emphasized. You can always practice it more. Get to the point where you don't need to actively think about your rotation. Sure, you'll always put some amount of attention on it, but you need to be able to split your attention on the fight. Stone Sky C, or the Burning Field for Endwalker, is a further thing you should look to. Assuming your gear isn't massively imbalanced for the dummy you're going for, this is a three minute time trial that can tell you if your damage is alright. Kill the dummy before time runs out. If your gear is fine, but the dummy won't die, or even get close to dead with how tight savage dummies can be, then that points to needing to work on your rotation. But here's the most important part with actually using this practice. A bad rotation is better than no or a slow rotation. ABC, always be casting. Openers and rotations are something people hammer into you all the time because it really is important. But mistakes will still happen with even your rotation. This might lead you to panicking. Don't. Just keep going with your rotation. Use the resources you have and keep hitting your buttons. Don't stand around wondering how to fix it. Just keep going. Restart your combo if necessary. The more you try to focus on fixing your rotation or such, the more you're shifting your focus off of a fight, off of mechanics going off, and dying, which will just ruin your rotation even more. Getting consistent with your rotation lowers how much effort it takes to perform, how much attention making a mistake with it will cost you, and how you minimize your losses. You'll be making these rotational mistakes in practice too, so you'll even have the practice of getting back into the flow already. So practice your rotation and if possible, even practice making mistakes. Don't just reset if you do something wrong. Keep going. Then when it happens in a real fight, you have no problems trying to just keep going in the highest stress environment, which lets you focus on your weaker aspects as well. With that tangent out of the way, there's many other mistakes to consider, mostly boiling down to mechanical mistakes. When you die, you do have time to just stop and think, depending on how long until you get a race sent your way. Spend that time considering why you died. What might prevent mistakes? Was it even your fault? Figure out the cause quick as you can and bring it up before the next pull if you're in a level of content that allows for it. But a very easy trap to fall into is focusing on the cause. This tends to lead into trying to pass the buck, pass the blame around to whose fault it was. Be diplomatic in your pointing of fingers. Not only might they have killed you by accident, but killed you by no fault of their own either. There can be a chain reaction. It can be demoralizing to begin with to have had a wife. It's even more demoralizing to be blamed for mistakes that weren't even yours. So it ends up being something you want to develop sooner than later. In more casual content, you tend to have less chance of ruining everyone's day, but your own day can be ruined. That skill being focusing on the solution. Pinpoint the cause, but don't linger. Focus on what can be done to fix it. A mistake happened, done. What can be done next time? Problem Solving 101 is actually solving the problem. In the context of 14, it goes back to other things discussed, like understanding mechanics and such. So this is a skill you build up to, but this is something even high-end raiders fall into the trap of often. They focus on the cause, not the solution. Since you need to recognize your mistakes, let's talk a little bit more about how to do that. There's a lot of things you can be doing, or not doing, to reduce mistakes and deaths. When you died or someone else died, did you or them take avoidable damage? Some jobs have very small self-heals, but those self-heals can make the difference even in the highest levels of content. 
Don't just assume the healer is going to heal you, or assume the player you know for a fact has some self-heals is going to use theirs. Give them a couple of seconds to do it, then heal them if three GCDs later, they're still low. How about your actions? Are you doing ABC? Enrages do exist in a number of fights, even as minor DPS checks. Ads often will explode even in casual content. This puts everyone in a dangerous position even if it's not a straight up wipe. Could also been your raid awareness is lacking. You didn't notice the giant ad or the enemy list update with new targets. Increase the size of the enemy list and zoom out your camera for those instances. How about your movement? Are you running around a lot? Melee players often make the biggest mistake of constantly running away from the boss anytime a mechanic happens. This puts them and other players in danger along with breaking the ABC rule. No, stuff like piercing talent doesn't count. Ranged moves, 99 out of 100 times, shouldn't be used. More on movement though, movement in itself is a learned skill. What your max melee range is, how to adjust around your allies so that you move to make room but don't walk out of enemy range or into another ally. Most of the time, you want to minimize your movements. Staying in melee range as a melee and leaving the outside of the arena for ranged players is part of this. But even then, you don't want to be making overly big movements. You do need to get back in for healing, and moving around a lot can just confuse your fellow ranged players with where you're going. If everyone has to spread out, wild, unpredictable movements will cause issues. Smaller, deliberate movements will save the day. Once again, goes back to understanding mechanics. Your average AoE is okay to be overlapping. It's overlapping other players you want to avoid. If you have four AoEs all overlapping each other, nobody's going to die unless the players are the ones being overlapped. There are some exceptions to this, but the vast majority follow this rule. Tied into this is also arena awareness. You can react to stuff way faster and safer if you pay attention to an arena's size and a layout. Is there some weird ornate design on the ground? That is probably related to mechanics. Is the arena a bunch of square tiles? Mechanics are based off these tiles and you want to pay attention. Or to quote the one Castoy tweet, there are lines on the floor. Beyond this though is the skill of knowing where north is. When getting into higher tier content, positions start to be assigned for performing certain mechanics. Fights are like a dance in that way. Keeping track of where north is will be extremely important. If your spot is southeast, it almost always is going to be based on the north of the arena. This is kind of an unspoken benefit to a tank always facing a boss north. There's so few exceptions to this, so it ends up being useful in a way beyond this prevents the boss from cleaving other players. It becomes a compass. The boss and the main tank is a compass point. It will always face north. You don't need to look over at your minimap. You don't need arena markers. You just need to see what direction the boss is facing, and you have north. This of course assumes the boss doesn't spin themselves, or the tank isn't randomly moving the boss around. But they have the easiest job of the raid, so it very likely is being done correctly. But even in those cases, you do have those other pieces I mentioned. Minimap and arena markers. A will be placed north almost always. If you really need to, your minimap is another option and is a compass in itself. You need to get used to finding north for that reason, and many others, including mistakes. If you die, you are going to be raced somewhere else in the arena, which means you're now out of your normal spot. Mechanics aren't going to wait for you, and if you don't move, someone else is going to die, which could just be you again. The sooner you can recognize where north is, the sooner you can get back to your spot. Getting turned around in busier fights can happen. Do what you can to keep yourself centered and able to orientate yourself at all times. Even things this simple sounding are massive improvements to your play. Let's start winding down with a few smaller tips. It can never be said enough, use your tools. All of them. Don't just hold for emergencies or just for bosses. Use the tools. They're useful, they're important, and they're going to make a run go better. This is especially something that needs to be emphasized with healers and tanks. You have an expansive toolkit. Ignoring half of it just makes everything harder. 
I go over this in many videos. If you watch me for any period of time, you've heard this plenty. A proper HUD layout and messing with your control scheme can give you some improvements to your play that you wouldn't expect. I refer back to my own UI video to emphasize this point. How you set yours up and what controls you use can be a major sticking point. Try legacy controls with strafing on A and D instead of turning keys. Don't give up after only like one hour though. Stick with it a bit to see if you like it. I've learned that the hard way with Splatoon. A lot of the info in this guide requires you to not panic and move around only as needed. Stay calm and focus on what you can learn. And remember that your hitbox is only like one pixel in the center of your character? All characters have the same hitbox. It's an advantage of the smaller races since you have less room you need to guess of where the center of your hitbox is, but not that the actual hitbox is smaller. I also had an entire video on this, but play other jobs and roles. Playing a single job as your main is fine, but make sure you understand how other jobs work at the minimum. Even base knowledge can improve your knowledge of your main job. That's just how it goes, if just by the nature of seeing other players do things you hate. If someone does something dumb, well, don't do that dumb thing yourself! For a full list of further teaching tools you may or may not have seen, my 1 to 90 guides and role actions guides, my UI video explaining my own UI, my Just Get Into Savage video that I intend to make a second one of in due time, my Play Other Jobs video, and my Mechanics Beyond Memorization video. I'm especially proud of that one. You don't even need to stick to just my videos though. If you know other creators who have similar videos, or videos that are even more recommended than my versions, well there you go. Even if I am to be proud of my content, other content creators aren't to be discounted. And finally, as I say in one of the video recommendations, just do it. Are you wanting to break into higher content? The only way to make that improvement is to do it. If you want to move into extreme content, join a learning party or get some friends to try getting into the previous extremes or such. You will never get into it if you don't just do it. The leap into extreme level content is pretty big from any other content, but extreme and savage are about the same. Extreme is usually a step below Savage, but some extremes are harder than several Savage level fights. I would even say the 6.2 extreme is even harder than P5, 6, and 7 Savage due to the insane speed. At most, P5S is harder than it, while P6S and P7S are both easier. If you think you're not Savage capable, you may have already done harder content. A lot of people make a big thing about being worried about rude players and toxicity. That's not this super common thing. Learning parties are for learning, and if you've properly set your expectations, and the expectations of players joining that it's a learning party, you're going to have a generally okay time. That's what all the tips were for anyway, to get you ready for pushing forward and finally just taking the leap. It's scary, it's an unknown space to you, but that's what other guides are also there for. Fight guides, deeper rotation guides, and so on. Prepare as much as you feel comfortable, but you do need to just make the leap eventually. Go for it. You're capable. And we all believe in you. Thanks for watching this video on improving as a player. Please leave a rating and subscribe to me. Hopefully you got a few useful tips out of this. Feel free to share your own tips for improvement. And while you're down there in the comments, head to the description and go follow my Twitter at Wes Galber, follow my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Wes Galber for other gameplay including all the Final Fantasies and Persona 5, or follow my Patreon to support this channel in specific. Or you could buy some cool merch as designed by my artist T. Go follow them as well at TRogueArt. Thanks for watching, take care, and may the power of Anna did hogs lay waste to your enemies. And of course I gotta give the extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ash Treat Weller, Eamon al -Khatib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sadia Diosasan, Serix, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Fraser97, James Hall, Jericho, Mazella, Nick Griffin, T-Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thank you all for watching, have a good one. See you for the next big project.